page 35, November 5th, 2021. Hello all, and welcome to another edition of the Book Nerd Diaries. We're the chilled bi-weekly podcast that dives deep into the latest books we've crossed off of our endless to read list. Please watch out for spoilers ahead, folks. Let's get our book nerd on. One of my earliest book-related memories is receiving an illustrated edition of Hans Christian Andersen's world-famous fairy tale, The Snow Queen for Christmas. Now, I don't exactly know what happened to that book, unfortunately, though I can probably guess that it ended up in the same severe state of disrepair as everything else I used a lot when I was a kid. Though that particular book is no longer around, the literally chilling tale has never really left my mind. Our incredible book for today, Splendors of Scarlet, by Emily Bain Murphy, borrows elements and inspiration from that immortal story, while giving it a gripping historical fantasy twist. Beyond that pure magic, however, this book is a biting study of what lengths people will go to to protect those they love, and how far those in power are willing to go to keep their station in life. I've lived through some pretty intense winter weather in my lifetime, but it can be said that sometimes nothing can be colder than the human heart. Our book starts out on November 7th, 1866, in the small village of Karlsund, Denmark. A young girl named Marit Olsen has been forced to stop her work of repairing a costume for her closest friend Eve. A resident of the nearby orphanage Marit herself grew up in, Eve is said to perform a special dance recital for a couple named the Madsons, who may potentially wish to adopt her. The costume could be what makes Eve stand out from the other children, and helps her find a new family. But Marit has just stuck herself with a sewing needle, and gotten blood all over it. Just when she's trying to figure out what to do, her roommate Agnes appears with some troubling news. The Madsons have decided to conduct their visit a whole day early, and will be arriving in just a short while. Desperate, Marit grabs some sewing supplies from her employer's private stores to fix Eve's costume. Agnes reluctantly agrees to keep this a secret, as long as Marit covers her lunch hours for the next month, which Marit quickly accepts. Once Agnes has left for her lunch, Marit sees no choice but to complete the repairs to Eve's costume using her magic. In the world of this book, the overuse of magic results in a deadly condition called the burn, which causes a person's blood to freeze into solid ice. For Marit, Eve is worth every bit of the risk, and so she quickly uses her powers to finish her task and rushes to the orphanage to give Eve her costume. She happens to get there just in time, as Eve is just moments from her recital when she arrives. Eve, a joyful, curious young girl, who has been more a little sister to Marit than anything, is more than grateful for the costume, and is thrilled to wear it for the recital. Eve then throws Marit for a loop by asking her if her own birth mother may have had magic herself. Marit replies that it may have possibly been so, and it may have been what caused her death. Finally, Eve asks if Marit herself has magic. Not wanting Eve to worry about her, Marit lies that no, she does not. Risking the wrath of her employers, she decides to stay for the recital and watches Eve dance her heart out. Despite Eve's very clear talent and all the efforts Marit had made to help her, the Madsons decide to adopt another child from the group. Just when the girl has lost hope, however, and Marit has resigned herself to adopt Eve herself. A high society widow in the audience, named Helene Vestergaard, speaks up and said that she would like to adopt Eve. Marit is highly worried about this, to put it lightly, as she does not wish to be separated from the person she loves most in the world. What's more, her father had tragically died in a mining accident years before, while working under the employment of the Vestergaard family. Naturally, she is not quite ready to trust them to take care of Eve. In desperation, Marit decides to take things into her own hands. 
being careful not to be detected, she stomps on the back of Helene Vestergaard's elegant fur jacket, causing it to rip. She then offers to repair it herself, to which Helene reluctantly agrees after Eve vouches for her. Mart quickly ducks into an alley and fixes the rip with her magic, before returning the coat to Helene. The latter offers to pay her for her work, but instead of money, Marit requests a job in the city so that she can be near Eve. Helene then counters with an even better offer. Because she did such an excellent job with her coat, would she accept a position as her and Eve's personal seamstress? This is more incredible than Marit could have imagined, so she immediately takes the job and leaves her old one behind without looking back. Little does she know, however, just how much she will have to learn in her new life as part of a high society household. She must be able to find her place amongst her fellow staff members, many of whom initially reject her. She must also meet her increasingly demanding seamstress duties without overusing her magic and dying of the burn in the process. What's more, she must also use her proximity to the Vestergaard family to find out the truth behind her father's death. Was it merely an accident, or the sign of something far more sinister at play? I initially chose Splinters of Scarlet to read for this show, because I am an absolute sucker for the work of Hans Christian Andersen. Besides the aforementioned book adaptation of The Snow Queen I had as a kid, I'm also a child of the 90s, who grew up watching Disney's classic animated take on his story, The Little Mermaid. Not to mention, the story of the Snow Queen has also had a sort of resurgence in recent years due to another little Disney film you may have heard of called Frozen. Though Disney may have served as many people's formal introduction to the works of Hans Christian Andersen, the original stories are far darker and more poignant than their animated counterparts. The Snow Queen, in particular, tells the story of an enchanted mirror created by the devil himself to corrupt humanity. Whoever looks into it is cursed to see nothing but the darkest aspects of human nature. The mirror shatters when the devil tries taking it up to heaven, and one of those pieces makes its way into the eye of a little boy named Kai. Kai's heart turns cold under the influence of the mirror and he violently turns against everyone who loved him, including his family and his dearest friend Gerda. He is then taken away to a far-off kingdom by a mysterious sorceress named the Snow Queen, who erases his memories with a kiss. Gerda, absolutely devastated by the loss of her friend, embarks on a harrowing journey to rescue Kai from the Snow Queen and thaw his frozen heart. Now, our book today is not a direct adaptation of the original story like Frozen is. Rather, it can be seen as a loving homage to the source material and Hans Christian Andersen himself, told through a slightly more realistic historical lens. Instead of an enchanted mirror, the fern is the curse that causes its unfortunate victim's heart to freeze, and the effect is far more literal in the latter case. Along with this, the antagonist is not the Snow Queen. Rather, it is the very real corruption and greed of those in the highest castes of society who do not care how many innocent magic users must die in service of their own interests. In the end, I would very much recommend Splinters of Scarlet to those who love a good fairy tale remix as I do. Much like its source material, this book perfectly walks the line between pitch dark social commentary and purely hopeful magical escapism. Despite the comparatively low circumstances our main character, Marit, has found herself in, she never lets anyone decide her fate for her. Rather, she uses her powers, both literal and figurative, to create success for herself out of almost nothing. Even more, she becomes a stalwart voice for those who are often forgotten. Historical fiction and fantasy have long been two of my absolute favorite genres of storytelling, so this book perfectly hits the sweet spot between the two. You occasionally get the warm, fuzzy feeling of being read a bedtime story, while also getting a glimpse of what the world was like in 1800s Europe, though naturally with plenty of magic mixed in for good measure. As always, some moments might be intense for some readers, 
so please be sure to check out the content warnings in our show notes before picking this book up for yourself. Here, we conclude the main part of our discussion for today. Fear not, though, dear listeners. We still have more Book Nerd Diaries headed your way after this very quick break. Are you an author, fellow podcaster, or small business owner looking to spread the word about your product or service? Then let us help you. We offer a number of affordable monthly advertising packages in various price ranges. So if you'd like to hear your ad here in future episodes, please head on over to our page at ko-fi.com slash bndpod and click on the shop tab to see what works best for you. Again, that's ko-fi.com slash bndpod. Then click on the shop tab. We can't wait to work with you. And welcome back, everyone. Now that we're on the other side of our break, let's get to that nerdiest part of our show, the Trivia Corner. In this segment, we give you a trivia question that is related in some way to our book. And, as Splinters in Scarlet is set in Denmark, that's where our question is headed today, too. Ready? Your question is, which of the following is the only country to share a physical border with Denmark. Is it A. Austria, B. Germany, or C. Sweden? Please feel free to pause right here to make your guess before going forward. Have you guessed? Your answer is B. Germany. Denmark's geography chiefly consists of an archipelago, jutting out from the European continent into the surrounding North and Baltic seas, along with a series of smaller surrounding islands. With Denmark mostly being locked in by water, the country of Germany is seen as their only true neighbor. My sources for this question were factretriever.com and nationsonline.org, and you can find the links in our show notes. With that, wonderful listeners, We have reached the end of another episode. I think a cup of cocoa is calling my name right now. But before we go, we'd just like to say thank you so much to Julie and Katie, aka one of the very best sisters a podcaster could ever ask for, for being our absolutely amazing subscribers on Patreon, to get perks like ad-free early episodes, two bonus episodes a month, and more, as well as help us keep the proverbial lights on, you can join them over at patreon.com slash bndpod. You can also support us for absolutely free by leaving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, sharing our episodes on social media, or telling the people in your lives about us. Small, independent podcasts like ours depend on word of mouth to survive and help our community grow, so every little bit helps more than you know. Next week, Friday, November 12th, you're dropping a brand new bonus episode just for our $5 and up Patreon subscribers. And we'll be right back here in two weeks to open another page of the Book Nerd Diaries. See you then all! The Book Nerd Diaries is written, edited, researched, and hosted by me, Amber Wilchin. Thank you so much to the wonderful Astro Freck from Pixabay for the use of our new theme song, The Grand Entrance, and one tomorrow, too, for our incidental music that plays during the Trivia Corner segment. If you'd like to connect with us online, please follow us on Instagram or Twitter at BNDPad, on Facebook at Book Nerd Diaries, or via our website at bndpod.wordpress.com. All of the links you need are in our show notes, so come say hi! If you have any comments, questions, or ideas for future episodes to send my way, please feel free to drop us an email anytime at bndpod at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, everyone, please be good to yourselves, because the world needs you. And don't forget to support your local library. <laughs>